Me and my uncle got into a story about the image of a town long associated with hot white supremacy. And, um, passing through Harrison along Highway 65, he put me out like my to catch your eye. It features a white girl and words quote, it's not racist, I kind of like an ad for white people. Swept in the hallway, you know, like the whole night. The toughest thing about being homeless is, um, I don't see it as being any kind of a racist design. When your friends say joy, I'm like, no. And I practically live in this fantasy world at school uh, everybody because else has a there's no way I told my friends, that. my teachers, Rob is the director or of the anyone Club's that I interact with. That's pretty embarrassing for me when someone asks me, is clear. who yeah, you go home with? Nice, I'm going to fib and say, I go home to my own place. I'm not going to tell them where I'm going to go. It takes a bit here. And the sheer number of idols not just a side, not just, you know, your energy at the moment, but it takes a the new ad comes away just months your after energy this controversial period billboard that stirred that nationwide controversy was don't removed. Have Mayor Jeff Crockett says home. this time around, the, the message is, is more direct. Not knowing not where you're going to go. And if we just keep quiet, like the next day, not knowing like it looks what's like your next step. Like that. Like, and where are you going to be? Like that you know? Crockett believes if you're like going this to someone else's house, are you going to away from the Harrison area in the bush or wherever it is that you want to go crash at for the night? You have to deal with everyone else's issues the bygone in a spontaneous in environment the and you never know what's going to happen. Up and, say, and that gives you a really dreadful stress. This. And it's like yeah, Jesus said, uh, we're in the world, but we're not of the world. You know, we, we're learning about spiritual things, and uh, I've been trying my best to, to, to do, you know, teach you spiritual things, and uh, you got to make do with what you got, you know. A lot of people... Saying that God won't use a redneck, and that what I do is kind of foolish. It is, but Bible says God chose the foolish things to confound the wise. Yep. Why? Because you're too smart. Smart people don't go to heaven. No. -uh. No. Uh, smart people, you know, they believe in science and evolution and uh, doctors. And all these things of the world. God says the friend of the world is his enemy. I know you saying that's foolish. And but you see, God chose the foolish things to confound the wise. Because see. Uh, what man calls foolish is spiritual understanding, knowledge, common sense. Sometimes it puts fear. You know, when you're out there, you could be walking uh, uh, and people that are that are wise. You know, they figure things out for themselves. You know, they could even learn the things in the Bible and uh, use them for their own benefit and for their own causes. Did you know that? If you use the word of God to justify your sin, it it it's you're not accomplishing nothing. No, the word of God is for righteousness. The word of God is for judgment. The word of God is a lamp unto our feet, and tells us which way to go. You know, and we got to stay on a straight path. There's a road that Jesus made. It's called a highway of holiness. And it's leading to the Mount Zion, which is a, a typology or analogy or a metaphor or a picture of the church, you know. And and the Bible says that nothing unclean can walk on this road. Nothing unclean. No lion or no ravenous beast. No, uh-uh. Old devil can't even walk on this road. No, he's got to stand out the ditch. He's got to, on each side of the road, there's always a ditch. And uh, as you go along the road, he tries to blind you so that uh, you'll fall in the ditch. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, if you're going to understand the things of God, you got to get a spiritual mind. And the only way to get that is to get the Holy Ghost. Yeah, them old people I've been talking to on the internet, they call the Christian left. There's some of them in my family, yeah. 
Oh, yeah. Uh, see, what it is, they got into that bullfrog doctrine uh, of uh, being uh, slowly and gradually uh, changed into what uh, the devil is. And he used the Democratic Party to do that. Democrats started out having a pretty good plan, but uh, just like Lot, who moved down into Sodom, uh, his his righteous soul was vexed Again this morning, because he lived there and was amongst all them heathens and sodomites and authorities in uh, unclean Illinois people. You know, a lot of them homosexual sodomites say job at a manufacturing warehouse that, uh, you know, God didn't judge Sodom and Gomorrah because of their the Henry Pratt perverse were killed sodomite was wounded. homosexual sin. Also shot at responding well, actually, he judged them. them. When I tell they you to repent, you say there's nothing to repent for. You say pride. That's what that's all about. And the Christian left are full of pride. You know, they use the Word of God to promote their socialistic uh, communist agenda using the Word of God to make you believe and to pray on your emotions and your feelings, making you believe they're for the poor. I don't know if he initially came to work with his weapon or so they can get their party and 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 their sinful agenda out there. Yeah, that kind of thing has been used by the devil for centuries. Yeah, that's that's his main plan. There's accusers of the brethren. They call us Pharisees. That's not fair, you see. Approximately four minutes. If I'm a Pharisee, you're a Sadducee. Immediately because when God looks at you, he gets real sad, you see. Police because you're saying you're a Christian, the first responding officers from a and yet you support one Democratic Party the that supports abortion, the shedding of innocent blood, the first five minutes. and a homosexual oh. agenda, so, yeah. and homosexual and, um, marriage, which is abomination of desolation. And then marriage marriage bed's holy. Paul said, let every man have his wife, and every wife have his husband. Have her husband, so... Who was believed uh, they won't commit fornication because any sin outside of the marriage bed uh, is that's when fornication. The shooter. Jake Simmons mother and any spiritual sin by uh, uh, the moment believe in false doctrine which so you promote kind of took cover. is spiritual Father, fornication and idolatry. In the building. I hate that yeah, it's uh, classic the selling of your birthright, like Esau. To do so. Investigators executed a search warrant at yeah. the woman's home, but nothing. You got some pretty good found. analogies on that, that website you got there, he would keep Christian Left. His, but you left out all himself. them. He didn't really you know, have like where it says that God is going to put the sheep on his right well, and the goats on his left. Record. In 1995, there can't be no Christian Left because the Christians are on the right. Michelle. Friday. Yeah. Adriana, thank you. Sure better watch out there, buddies. You're following that uh, guy up there calls himself to be president. That uh, Obama nation is what you're trying to make. And you've got an Obama nation because of it. Yeah. The All these analogies and things that God uses very clear and plain to see with people who have open vision whom God is blessed to be able to see things spiritually yeah the whole problem with everybody is they don't have the Holy Spirit you see when you have the Holy Spirit in you things become spiritual that which is born of flesh is flesh acts like flesh talks like flesh and they're always saying, I'm only human because they're flesh. But that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. And they act like the Spirit that has begotten them. Yeah, they act like their daddy, the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm acting like my daddy. Oh, Holy Ghost is my daddy. Just like he was Jesus' daddy. Because when I got in Jesus, he pointed me the way. He's the truth. He's the life. He knocked on my door one day, and I opened it up, and things began to change. Yeah. Yeah, but, I, you know, you got to submit to him. Yeah. Y'all call me a Pharisee because of my works. You know, I teach works. 
Well, I want to tell you something right now. Jesus taught works. He said, you got to work while it's day because night's coming where no man can work. He said, if you put your hand to the plow looking back, you're not fit for the kingdom of God. And I tell you what, I don't know if you've ever had your hand on a plow or rode a tractor, but that's some pretty hard work. And if you're out there plowing and you're still in the old man, you're still the old creature, you ain't been changed, renewed, born again into a child of God, you're still living in that old house, you better get you a change of garment. Because that spotless and unblemished gar garment that Jesus gives you is your evidence of the Holy Spirit. Well, I'm here at work, and it's time. And when I told her I was pregnant, she told me that I didn't. I couldn't other um, have a child on things or household. 